I'm a running shoe expert and today I'm going to be telling you why the Rebel V3 is one of the best running shoes out there but it does depend on the person. Watch the whole video and I'll explain all the implications in a second. As always, I'm going to start off with the specs. The heel has 30 millimeters of foam, followed by the toe with 24 millimeters of foam, which gives a 6 millimeter offset or heel to toe drop. Now that's classified as quite mid range. You can get some shoes with 10 mil drops, some shoes with zero drops. So I feel like it will be a good in between for a lot of people. Now the shoe comes in at a weight of 201 grams and 7.1 ounces in a US 9. And I feel like that's a very light shoe so we're moving into the territory of those racing shoes that are extremely light so yeah it's kind of nice to know that a versatile trainer like this which some people use for daily training is this light but one thing to note is that weight is less of an issue nowadays a lot of shoes are getting light so it's more about the rest of the feature so don't feel like weight should be the biggest variable to look out for when you're buying a shoe so i was editing this video and i realized that i didn't really talk about who this shoe is not for and i think that's a very important thing in every shoe review as well this shoe is definitely not for you if you have any of the conditions that i'm about to list flexahalysis tendinopathy flexor digitorum tendinopathy perineal tendinopathy tip post tendinopathy and sesamoiditis hallux rigidus can i think of anything else maybe in some cases morton's neuroma or most cases i guess i can go into the anatomical detail of any of these if you ask me in the description but i think it'll be too long to explain everything individually but long story short all these conditions are ones where you don't want the shoe to flex as much and therefore you don't want to be wearing a Rebel V3 because they're flexible. The other thing to consider is that the Rebel V3 is a very, very neutral shoe, meaning that it flexes pretty freely, it's not got any arch support, and therefore if you pronate a lot to the extent that you get pain from the pronation, then I wouldn't wear this shoe and I would wear a stability shoe. But if you pronate, that's not an issue at all. I pronate a fair amount, to be honest, I pronate a lot, but I don't wear any stability shoes because I don't get pain from it. So pronation is only bad if you're getting pain from it. If you pronate, that's not an issue at all. And if anything, it's normal because pronation is a normal shock absorbing mechanism. This is all facts that not a lot of shoe reviewers talk about. So if anyone tells you that, you know, this is the shoe for you, you want to make sure they know what they're talking about before you kind of, you know, buy into what they're saying because you know, it's so easy for anyone to just say, oh, this is a good shoe, get it. But it's not necessarily tailored to your feet and everything. So it's good to get, you know, proper advice from someone that does shoe fitting or honestly, it's better to just go into store and get your foot tested by a professional as well. So yeah, definitely consider that. Starting off with the upper, they call this a lace knit upper, but I definitely feel as though it's more engineered mesh. It's definitely very breathable and I have no complaints on the upper. It also locks down a lot better than the V2 and therefore you feel like there's less diagonal slippage. The other thing to note is that it fits a little bit short and also shallow in the toe box. So above your toes, you're not going to be able to lift them up as much. And because it's a little shorter, I feel like it's good to go half a size up. I usually wear a 10.5 or an 11 depending on the brand and the model of course. So in this particular model, the Rebel V3, I wear a US 11 but other shoes I can wear a 10.5. Moving on, we're going to be talking about the midsole. The midsole is usually the most important part of the shoe for a lot of people because it's what connects the foot to the ground. It's the foam underneath the foot. In this shoe, it uses fuel cell foam which is their kind of responsive and racier fast foam, bouncy as well. And yeah, this foam is pretty similar or if not exactly the same as what they used in the Rebel V2. I don't notice a personal difference. What I do know though is that this version, the version 3, has 1.5 millimeters more stack than the V2, which is obviously a tiny difference. 1.5 millimeters, that's barely anything. It's not even worth noting, if anything. But I guess if you like cushioning, then it's a small benefit. I personally feel like the V2 had enough cushioning. It was like that good sweet spot between not too cushioned and also not too low profile. I feel like in many ways, this is such a good versatile in-between shoe that's gonna keep a lot of people happy. Cause even the toe box going back to the upper, it's quite wide and it's gonna accommodate a lot of different widths as well. In the Rebel V2 review, I remember mentioning that the foam is pretty good at adapting to whatever pace you run. So when you're running a little bit of a slower pace, it feels a bit more soft and cushiony. Whereas when you pick up the pace, it becomes a little more firm and responsive. So I feel like it's a great shoe to do fartlexing where you're changing your speed quite frequently. Or even if you just wanna lock into one pace and 
sustain that for a long period of time, this is also a pretty good shoe for that too. Now the one thing that makes this shoe different to all the other shoes is that a lot of shoes are getting a bit stiffer, harder to flex, but this one is very flexible. You can actually scrunch it up into a ball if you wanted to. Flexibility is good in this day and age because a lot of shoes are becoming plated with carbon plates or nylon plates and they're also getting thicker and therefore they flex less. So there's a hole in the market for shoes like this that are flexible because a flexible shoe is very important because it's going to work the intrinsics of the foot, it's also going to work the extrinsics of the foot as well and it's also going to work the Achilles tendon complex a bit more which a lot of shoes that are stiff and not flexible are going to take the load off that so you want your foot to do a bit of the work sometimes otherwise you know if you don't use it you're going to lose it so you kind of want one flexible shoe in your rotation so if you only have stiff shoes right now i would definitely consider getting this in your rotation just so that you have a bit of variability in terms of the load that you're putting throughout the leg you want to load different parts of the leg in order to not overload it and get an injury and the final part of the shoe that we want to talk about is the outsole and that's where the shoe contacts the ground so the rubber is placed pretty strategically you have this one piece kind of rubber at the heel so they can land on a piece of rubber and not directly wear out the foam and the shape of the rubber is also significant because most people roll in which is you know turning inwards and there's a bit more rubber on the inside here although i will say that in the heel most people land on the outside so i'm glad that this bit is still here as well so a lot of people tend to land on the heel and then roll this way and then you get more wear here as you move up the shoe and not having the rubber in this part which is just exposed foam the white bit is good in the sense that it saves a lot of weight and keeps the shoe quite light in terms of like traction and grip i feel like it always performs how i want it to feel i've never felt like i lost balance or slipped or anything like that so it does the job and it's really good so to conclude this pretty concise review i feel like this is my favorite plateless shoe so a shoe without a carbon fiber plate or a nylon plate this is definitely my favorite this would be a good versatile shoe that you can do everything in it's going to be good for your easy runs it's going to be good for your tempo it's going to be good for threshold it's going to be good for intervals it's going to be good for racing as well if you're not too serious about your time but the one thing that you may want to consider is that because of its pretty soft foam and a little bit less cushioning it won't be as durable as other shoes so yes you can use it for everything but i personally like using it more for my specific faster stuff because when i do tempos in this i know that i'm not getting the benefit of a carbon plated shoe and i'm doing more of the work so it feels like more of an honest shoe to work out in and i like the feeling that i'm putting in the work rather than letting the shoe do the work for me i don't usually do easy jogs in this i think the slowest pace that i do is like a faster long run in this so you know we're talking for me like 420 per kilometer 405 per kilometer that kind of range there that i do my fast long runs in i feel like this is a good shoe for that but i personally wouldn't want to do any slow mileage in this because it feels like a waste of the durability another good thing about this shoe is that it goes on sale pretty frequently so both of the shoes that i've got i've gotten for very cheap yeah i feel like that's also another benefit so you can kind of stock up on them um if you do want to use it for everything so that kind of sums up what i think about the shoe let me know if you have any questions you can comment them below and i'll answer them also let me know what you want me to review next leave a like on the video subscribe for more content and i'll see you soon